this video, I'm going to discuss three major theories of early language development. These are explanations that have been proposed for basically why humans learn language and what can contribute to learning language well. Uh, remember, when we talk about scientific theories, we're not just talking about hunches. Uh, they are based on care careful thought, preferably on lots of evidence too, and they provide a framework for understanding uh, real world phenomena. And so one of the first theories that I'm going to talk about is the idea that infants need to be explicitly taught language. And sometimes uh, we apply the terms learning theory or behavioral theory uh, to this general notion. And uh, a big name associated with this particular line of thinking is B.F. Skinner. If you've taken a psychology class before, you might have heard his name before. You might remember uh, his work on uh, operant reinforcement uh, and other key topics uh, that he uh, uh, he uh, developed this thing called a Skinner box where you could put an animal in the box They could press a lever it could deliver a reinforcement or reward like a food pellet And then they can manipulate how the reward was delivered uh, to see how that would change that subject's behavior uh, And so Skinner also he did a lot of animal research But he was also interested in human behavior and he applied his ideas to human behavior and he basically noticed that as adults, we reinforce infants and toddlers for attempting to use language. Uh, they, they say something that sounds like a word, we get excited, we give them attention, we might cheer them on. Uh, if they learn to ask for something that they want and you give them that, you're reinforcing them. Uh, so there's definitely this, there's definitely evidence for reinforcement to learning language. Um, children who have been explicitly taught and encouraged by parents, they often do have an advantage in their language learning. And so from Skinner, we get this idea that, well, you have to be taught to learn language. It comes from reinforcement. Uh, it comes from this teaching and this reinforcement. But we also have another theory of language development, and that is the social interaction approach. In this approach, we emphasize our social nature as human beings. We like to be among others. We like to connect to others. Communication is this really effective tool for allowing us to live in groups and to get our needs met within these groups. And so in the social interaction approach, we say that infants communicate because humans have evolved as social beings. It's this important part of our existence. And um, when you do learn language, it does allow you uh, to ask for things, to get information from others. It gives you all of these advantages when you are able to communicate with other members of your group. Now, what other, what other explanations do we have out there? We also have this approach that uh, basically it's a self-teaching or self-learning approach. Sometimes people call this the nativist approach, and this is uh, highly associated with Noam Chomsky. And this theory, uh, proposes that infants are just naturally curious, they are born interested in language, and they are just naturally inclined to learn language. Chomsky even proposed that there was a device in the mind called a language acquisition device, or LAD, and that this just uh, uh, made it possible. It gave you the capability uh, to learn language. Uh, he said that language is too complex to be mastered through step-by-step -step conditioning. It's fancy. It's special. Something about the human mind uh, allows us to learn this, and we are drawn to learn this as human beings. There is a problem uh, now that we have advances in neuroimaging, uh, you know, in uh, neuroscience, brain research. We haven't found uh, we haven't found any part of the brain that would correspond to a language acquisition device. We actually see that language is spread out throughout the brain. I mean, we do have specific parts that are involved in specific aspects of language, uh, but we really don't have evidence for there being an actual language acquisition device. Um, we do find evidence, though, for infants being naturally interested in language and then for them to be individually very motivated to learn language. So, you know, there is, uh, there is some, um, uh, there is some support there. Uh, Chomsky did also notice that around the world language was part of culture and that he also did take note of the universal sequence of language development, that it always tends to go in a particular order. And as we've talked about in previous videos, we do see evidence for that. 
And so which of these theories is true? Which one of them explains language development? Well, there's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit that can be taken from each. It's really more complicated than just any one of these particular theories. So all perspectives on language development, they offer some insight into language acquisition. We can combine them all to get kind of this big picture idea of how we learn language. Are we born naturally inclined to take it in? Yes, we are. Are we naturally curious about language? Yes, we are. Does it offer a social advantage? Absolutely. Do adults reinforce us for trying? Yes. In the vast majority of cases, yes. So there's, there are elements of truth in all of these. So um, not just one is correct. Human language learning is complicated. And in the future, we're going to gather more evidence, we're going to learn more, and we'll probably have even further explanations for what affects why we learn language and what, uh, uh, what quality, you know, what quality we achieve in our language learning. So this is an ever-evolving field.